Hello, this is Victor Perez. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up DaVinci Resolve to color manage a project using ACES. For this example, I just created a new project and I imported a bunch of images coming from different sources, so you can have an idea of how to import images and set up the right IDT to get import into the timeline in the right way and all with the same color space aligned. So, the first thing we are going to do to set up the project is to go to the project settings here. Now, on this menu on the left, you have to get to the color management. Here you are. By default, the color science DaVinci is going to use is the DaVinci YRGB. For using ACES, you need to go here to ACES CCT. You can use also the ACES CC, but ACES CCT, as I mentioned in the book, is more familiar for colorists. So, is the color correction space with the toe. So, ACES CCT is going to be our choice. Here you are. As soon as you select it, you have the different options for the ACES workflow. So, the first thing that you are going to make sure you are aligned is the ACES version. You have even the previous versions of ACES in here, but make sure everybody is using the same, so it cannot be arbitrary the one that you like. So deal with other departments, so you are all using the same version. Of course, the latest is going to be the better, but not all softwares that are used by other departments are going to have the ability to get to the latest version available, especially if the version is very recent. So just ensure everybody is using the latest available. So for this example, I'm going to use ACES 1.3. Here you are. The options that we are going to have now are going to depend on the settings that you are going to have on set. For instance, the camera. So the ACES input transform is the IDT. So depends on what's the camera, you want to optimize this. So what this is going to do is, it's going to apply this IDT by default to every material you are going to import in the bin. So in the clips that you have available. So if you have been shooting with different cameras, use the main camera. And that is just going to have everything applied to that. And for other cameras or other sources, you need to manually set up the input device transform for that particular clip. Okay? In this case, just to make things easier, I'm not going to apply any input transform. So I'm going to manually apply the input transform to each clip and I'm going to show you later. Okay? But in here, you should put the camera color space. Okay, if you are using the black magic design film, you should apply that, and that is going to apply that default input device transform to every clip. Okay, in this case, we are going to use no input transform. Then, uh, by default, you are going to have the apply ACES reference gamut compress. So that is something I will leave. Um, you have many other options in here that I'm not going to mention, so just refer to the manual. So I'm just going to go to the essentials of the setting. And of course, every project is different and every project is going to have different needs. So in here, I'm covering a generic case scenario. So once you have defined the previous things, we are going to the ACES output transform. And remember, the output transform is always relative to your display, so your monitor, for instance. So in this case, because I'm using a sRGB monitor, I'm going to make sure every image that I have uh, imported in the timeline is going to be displayed from the timeline using this output transform. Okay, so I'm going to select sRGB. You have plenty of other options. Make sure it's matching the projector or the TV or the monitor that you are using. Okay, refer to the manual of your monitor in order to make sure because a uh, different setup in here can have a dramatic change to the perception of what you consider it is right. And because in DaVinci we are going to work color grading and all of that, you need to have an absolute perception of 
what you see on the screen. So make sure this is in the right setting. Okay, sRGB in my case. Everything that you have in here is going to be a, a default, a standard, okay? Something like the graphic white level, which is 100 nits. So that is just going to refer to the 100 nits that is the standard for non-HDR content, okay? So I'm just going to leave that uh, for the time being because in any case, I'm just working on a sRGB monitor. If you have an option that supports high dynamic range, it's going to have other kind of options. So that's all we need right now for working in ACES in SDR, as opposite as HDR, so non-HDR content. Okay, now we are going to save. As you can see, everything we are going to see in here is looking strange. In this case, I can assure you that this clip on the right, that is the first clip in the timeline, is looking correct. Why? Because we don't have any kind of transform. Well, that's right, because this clip has been already converted into ACES before getting into this timeline. So you don't need any kind of transform to this clip that you have in here, because the clip is already in ACES. For everything that is not in the ACES workflow, you need to put that particular clip, in this case, this, this, and this one, into the right IDT. So when you get importing that into the timeline, everything is going to be aligned. How do you do that? Well, I'm going to the first clip, this one. I'm going to bring it there. So with this, just to remind you that we are in the edit uh, page of DaVinci Resolve, I'm going to right click and in here we have the ACES input transform. So it's the same as we saw in the panel of the color management, but in here you have the options to go clip by clip. This is a Canon C500, so I'm going to use this Canon C500 tungsten and it's going to give me this look that we are going to assume is the right look. And that is something very important. You cannot guess, you just need to assume. So the data that you are placing in the IDT, in the input transform, you need to make sure is the right one. Because if not, this image is going to have the wrong color space, hence it's going to look very, very bad. And it's not going to be in the right uh, color space, so all the corrections are going to be difficult and, most important, wrong. Okay, for this image, uh, we have a very different approach, because in the previous one, this was a digital camera, but for this one, this is film. So how do you convert that? Because you have presets for digital cameras, as you can see here, the manufacturers, but what about the film? Well, for that, we are going to use this color space conversion, and we are going to select ADX, which is for the film stock. And in this case, it's a 10 bit, so it's ADX 10, and that is going to give me the right look. And for this one, that is a sRGB image, we are going to select the following setting, which is color space conversion, sRGB texture. And this is going to be the look. So now every image that has been imported in there is going to reflect in here in the output monitor with the right look. Okay, so make sure the footage you are importing is having applied the right ACES input transform. And remember, by default, the input transform that is going to be applied is the one that you select in here. So that is a default. Okay, so everything that you haven't touched is going to be imported like this, unless you override that setting by importing manually the ACES input transform. Okay, now the next step we are going to talk 
in this video is how to generate the shots with one file per frame in order to allow the compositing or manipulation of the single clips in a frame sequence manner by other third-party softwares. So we are going to generate intermediate files, files that we are going to use with other softwares, and then we are going to receive those files transformed by those third-party softwares. So as this step is going to be an intermediate, we need to ensure the settings of ACES are going to be neutral. So we are going to use the ACES compliant standards. So the first thing I'm going to suggest you to do is to go to the color management settings and ensure the ACES output transform is deactivated. So we are going to no output transform because you don't want to have any kind of manipulation to the master set of primaries, the AP0. So we are going to export everything from the ACES 2065 hash one, which is the AP0 primaries for the gamut. And that is the standard for the ACES compliant uh, set of EXR files that we are going to generate. Okay, so ACES output transform to no output transform. Now we are going to save. Even if it's looking strange in our monitor, that is perfectly fine because remember, this is just how your monitor is going to visualize, but we need to trust the maths and we know that the images are going to be located in the color space that we need, which is the ACES compliant. So after that, we are going to the deliver and in here we're going to have the timeline of the clips that we are going to export. Remember, if you're working with third-party image manipulators, usually in the visual effects pipeline, you prefer to have one frame per file. So we are going to generate a file sequence that is going to contain all the frames in an ACES compliant EXR sequence. Okay, so the first thing is to set up that we want individual clips. Okay, so remember, this setting is for intermediates, not for delivering a, a one clip for the final video. So for the intermediate, we want individual clips. Okay, regarding the audio, well, we don't need the audio if you are going to work in compositing, for instance, for, for Nuke. So just for the time being, I'm just going to remove the audio from here. Now, in the video, we are going to format and we need to make sure we are going into EXR. Okay, what is the codec we are going to use? Well, we are going to use RGB half. So it's the half float, which is 16 bit half float with no compression. Okay, that is the standard for the ACES compliant. So that's it. Now, ensure that the resolution is the one that you want to use as the master resolution. I will advise you to use the highest available and then expect them to deliver back to you the final resolution of the project that is going to be the delivery. But by providing higher resolutions, you are going to allow more information for tasks like, for instance, tracking. But that is not regarding this color. So in terms of color, it makes no difference at all what is the resolution that you want to put in there. Okay, so then in the advance, you are going to have a few uh, settings that are going to be relative again for image and things that are not going to be directly related to color. But things that you have to keep in mind is like you need to enable the flat pass, which is no color, no modifications whatsoever to the clips. So always on. And that is going to ensure no further color manipulations are going to be applied to the images. Remember that the IDT, so the input transform, is not going to be considered a color manipulation, but just a way of ingesting the clip in the right color space. 
So this is going to prevent any color manipulations that you may apply with the color uh, page in there. Okay. Something that is going to help in case you are changing the resolution is the four size in uh, to highest quality and in terms of the color properties, something that is going to help for sure is to force the buyer to the highest quality. I will always keep this on, okay? Because remember, the files that you are going to source from here are the files coming from the camera. So you want to get those files to act as the masters, okay? so. Everything that is going to be in terms of the color manipulation and the generation of the files themselves is going to define the quality of the pipeline. So make sure all the settings are in the right place. And in terms of color, EXR half in the RGB, so no alpha, it's just RGB uh, channels, no compression. I will say the force the Bayer to highest quality is always a must. And I will say also the enable flat pass is always on, so you are sure no color manipulations are being applied. Okay, once you have that, just add to the render queue, just select the folder containing the other folders, and that is going to generate the renders of every shot you have in your timeline to be ready for third parties to operate other tasks like, for instance, compositing in Milk. So this has been Victor Perez and thanks for watching.